Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our new hour long Kremlin News first at four. I'm Tom Sherry and I'm Whitney Ward. We begin tonight looking at coronavirus data across the area. Yeah, at last check, 60% of eligible Spokane County residents have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine. Meanwhile, 54% are fully vaccinated here in Spokane. King County continues to lead the way for vaccinations in Washington State. More than 83% of people in King County who are eligible have at least one one shot. According to the Mayo Clinic vaccine tracker, Washington ranks 10th in the country at 69%. Idaho has one of the lowest vaccination rates in the country at 45%. So the surge in COVID patients has locally forced Spokane's two major healthcare providers, Providence and MultiCare, to postpone many elective surgeries. And when you hear that term, mm -hmm. you may think of minor operations or cosmetic procedures, but you need to understand that those elective procedures, they mean things that can be very serious to mm -hmm. someone's quality of life or health. And those people who are waiting for those procedures may be suffering greatly. That is the case for Larry Knight. He's an Air Force veteran who lives in Medical Lake, and he suffers from ulcerative colitis. He was set to undergo the first of three procedures to get his colon removed on September 24th. Oh. But because of the recent surge in COVID cases, he now has to wait until at least October to start that process. Until then, he says he has to deal with immense amounts of pain. Yeah, it's extremely painful. Um, my wife quite a few times has tried to drag me to the ER, but I've kind of refused because I feel like I'm kind of wasting people's time a little bit, but um, at the same time, there's really not much they can do besides pump me with pain meds and send me on my way. So Larry's surgery was supposed to be done by a third party provider using facilities at Providence Holy Family. Now he's on medication that makes him immunocompromised until he can get in for surgery. Coming up tonight on Creme 2 News at 5, we'll have more from Larry on how having his surgery delayed is affecting his life and even mm. impacting his family. Well, there could be COVID-19 vaccine for children aged 5 to 11 years old by Halloween. Pfizer says it's getting closer to submitting for an emergency use authorization. After that, the FDA will evaluate benefits and risks, a process they say could take just a matter of weeks. Multiple health experts uh, expect that the authorization will be approved by the end of next month. State troopers, correction officers and ferry workers are banding together now against the statewide vaccine mandate. More than 90 workers are listed as plaintiffs on a lawsuit that was entered against Governor Jay Inslee. That case filed in Superior Court in Walla Walla County on Friday asks the court to find the state's vaccine mandate unconstitutional. Seattle attorney Nathan Arnold represents those workers and wasn't available for comment today. It was August 9th, though, when Governor Inslee announced that mandate for most state employees as well as healthcare workers. He later added educators too. It requires workers to be fully vaccinated as a condition of employment by October 18th, not allowing an alternative option for COVID testing and also has very limited exemptions. So the governor's office responded to the lawsuit, telling our sister station in Seattle, these requirements are legal and we look forward to responding in court, adding it is not unreasonable to ask public servants to protect the public from being infected with COVID. Pullman police are currently searching for a missing woman. Rebecca Madrialeos was last seen on Sunday evening. She's 50 years old and was wearing a gray hoodie with navy jeans. Pullman PD is asking anyone to contact them if they have information on her whereabouts. Well, last week, the new Spokane Valley Amazon Fulfillment Center opened its doors for the first time. The facility will employ 1,000 people. Our Amanda Rowley was there today. So, Amanda, how would you say this new fulfillment center is different from the one in West Plains? Yeah, well, thanks for having me, guys. So, Tom, there's a lot of differences uh, to go through, right? We are familiar with the West Plains facility. Mm -hmm. Now we have the new one in Spokane Valley. The difference with the new facility is that this one is designed to ship larger project products, rather. Now, that's anything from a 40 pound bag of dog food to patio furniture and lawn mowers. Now the new facility is referred to as GEG2, whereas the West Plains Fulfillment Center is GEG1, the OG, right? Mm -hmm. Now you might remember <laughs> GEG1 uses a warehouse or multiple warehouse robots to sort their products, but the new facility, it doesn't because it's again, focused on those larger mm -hmm. projects and those robots can only hold so much, right? Now that means that GEG2 employees are using 
traditional machines like forklifts to move and sort in the warehouse instead. Okay, so, that's yeah. pretty interesting. What do we know about delivery times? A lot of people are going to hear, hey, this is a fulfillment center right here locally. Does that mean we're going to get really fast delivery? Yeah, that's a question <laughs> I love to ask Amazon when we do these follow-up stories yeah. because a lot of viewers are asking the same thing. So now that Spokane County has those two fulfillment centers, that's a big question. Does that mean I'm going to get day of mm -hmm. shipping? Well, the short answer is we're just going to have to Here wait and go. see, oh. okay? <laughs> they still need to build up their inventory at this facility, but the general, general manager says customers should eventually still expect faster delivery. Take a listen to what he said today. It certainly means as we build up our, our inventory levels here, for larger, the larger product I mentioned, it'll be much faster delivery than what customers may be accustomed to. Uh, and then uh, ultimately, if we add a delivery station here, which are the stations that have the Amazon vans that do direct delivery, that really expedites um, to a point where we, we could have same day shipping. For now, I would say it's just gonna get faster, um, especially for those products that um, customers in Spokane aren't used to being able to get. And that's what we like to hear, right? Yeah. Faster, of course, if yeah, I can get always. a same day. <laughs> now, I do want to be clear, though, we have not had a chance to tour inside the facility. Amazon says those new employees are kind of still getting the hang of things, so they want to be ready to show us a, <laughs> a great look around. Okay. We do expect to get an inside look sometime in October, so stay tuned. I can only imagine yeah. all the bustling mm -hmm. around, yes. especially so, all those large That's products. a thousand new jobs. It is, a thousand new jobs, and they are still hiring, currently hiring. Wow. I actually saw a stream of people going into that recruiting office on site, so you can do it on online or go to that facility in Spokane Valley. Look that's at great. us go, two of yeah. them now. That's yeah. fantastic. And I know we've got all the information on If you're looking yes. for the, one of those jobs, you yep. can just go to crime.com. I love that. Amanda, thank, thank you so you. much. All right, Tom, let's talk weather because it was another beautiful day. I was out walking the dog today. And my neighbor said, doesn't get much better than this. Yep. And I agree. I don't have a dog anymore, but I was out walking <laughs> and I petted a lot of dogs oh, along the way. It was absolutely beautiful, as you're saying. 74 degrees right now. We've got wind out of the south southwest at 11 miles per hour. Average wind speeds around the region. A little bit of a breeze in the low teens in Spokane and out towards Moses Lake uh, and then single digits up around Sandpoint and Kettle Falls. We'll look for a pleasant evening early on then it will cool down into the 50s, low 50s tonight and then we'll look for mostly sunny skies in the morning and then increasing clouds uh, late in the afternoon and into the evening hours. We'll look for a daytime high of 72. Take a look at this. Rain moves in on Friday. We'll look for 64 uh, for Saturday and 62 is all we can get for a a uh, daytime high on Sunday. I love the rest of your seven day forecast all coming up in a few minutes. All right. Sounds good, Tom. Thank you very much. Well, we have some big news out of Seattle for the Mariners coming up after the break. How close the team really is to qualifying for a wild card spot in the playoffs.